Hi, HR that. Nation. Welcome back to another episode of the HR Leaders Podcast, the show where we explore the future of work with industry experts and HR executives from the world's leading global brands. Today, we have a special show. We're in the studio. We have two guests. I'm super excited for this one. We're joined by Teresa Proctor, who's a former Chief People Officer, Global Board Advisor, and Senior Consultant at Org Shakers, and Vivek Patney, CEO and Co-Founder at Wema. Welcome. How are you both? Thank you. Great. Thank you. And it's so nice to be here in your <laughs> studio. Yeah, Thanks really for joining. Good. It's actually a bit surreal seeing people. Mm. Why is it weird to see people in person now? Almost like we're, we've been living in the, the sort of, well, I say, I say the metaverse at this point for, for so long, but it's great to see <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, but that social anxiety, don't you? Yeah. You're like, oh God, I have to go into the studio. <laughs> it's, the opposite. <laughs> it's the opposite. Yeah. yeah. Before we jump in, um, tell everyone a little bit more about each of yourselves personally and your journey and also how you met. We'll start with you mm. three. So, um, Therese Proctor, I've been 35 years as a HR professional, um, but I'm UK based. My role with Org Shakers is international and I've got two fantastic daughters, Shannon and Tara. <laughs> um, I guess for me throughout my career, my role has always been about helping people to be the best they can be and identifying any barriers within the workplace and, and putting solutions in place for that. So a deep understanding, I think, of what matters to people. Some people mm -hmm. say I'm, I'm a, a bit of a, a shaker, shaker upper, uh, quite provocative. I'm quite curious about what makes people tick, and and for that, I think it's helped with some of the solutions that we've been able to identify and and give people great opportunities. I've also got a really deep respect for the role that tech can play. Uh, in helping us in HR mm -hmm. with solutions to, to enhance people's lives. And, and that's how I met Vivek. Uh, Vivek and his family have got a, a deep, well, a deep history in fintech. Mm. And, and more recently, that focus has changed to social tech and really excited about the product that they've got and, and how it can help. Vivek, I don't know if you yeah, want to thanks, talk Teresa. a bit more about yourself. Yeah, so Vivek Patney, I'm the CEO of Wema. My journey started actually uh, not technically in social care. I was in Deloitte for a short time where I was working kind of in the corporate world literally after about eight months. So I realized it probably wasn't the route I wanted to go down. <laughs> I'm going to say anything mean about Deloitte at that point. So yeah. Yeah. after eight months, you're like, that's enough. No, it was a fantastic <laughs> company. It was the role I was doing and I knew I always wanted to start my own business. And we have been in talks for a good four or five years about what it was going to be. And this was with my parents actually, okay. because I had personally been a carer for my granddad for about 10 years. Um, I was his primary carer and then you get other family members getting into that mix like grandma, their sisters, their, their siblings, their cousins, everyone else starts getting unwell when they get to that generation. And we were having to manage the care for all of them. And it got to a point where myself, my mum and my dad said, actually, why don't we try and make a change in this space? Because one, the technology was was near to nothing. It was very legacy based, if anything at all. Um, but also the accessibility to the services that we wanted were just not there. And especially you can imagine with with a family like ours and my granddad being Gujarati we wanted to find people that would understand him speak his language understand his culture make him feel as comfortable as possible and we just found that a really challenging task so that's where the idea around Wema came um, the business model came around that it's then all about improving the accessibility to social care which is now framing its way within the working care challenge in the corporate world amazing and how did you meet oh so we ended up meeting yeah sorry <laughs> yeah. so we ended up meeting because um actually uh, a lady that works for us called Wendy um, is very close friends with Teresa. And Wendy said, oh, I know this amazing person, Teresa. I need to connect you guys. And we ended up connecting um, through the Org Shakers link as well. And since then, we've actually been working with Org Shakers. Fantastic in terms of data management, um, research, uh, research-based um, kind of lead generation, and actually just supporting us on business development generally. Amazing. So we've been working closely with Teresa and Andy and everyone else at the team. So it's meant to be. It was I think so. Yeah. It's been a yeah. fantastic but, you know, relationship. That's the thing. You know, chance meetings mm -hmm. and people that you know, that's how it all works. And exactly. when you can connect on a on a purpose, and age to me really matters, you know, not just because I'm aging. But but <laughs> you I age yourself kids, early, you was like thirty five years <laughs> yeah. people were there were doing the maths. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but you know, age can be quite a taboo topic. Mm. And it really matters to me because I think that there are so many benefits that you can get out of an older worker. And I think that in the past, well, look, you know, not, not that long ago, before lockdown, I was in McDonald's and it was in Oxford Street. It was really busy on the high street. I got into McDonald's and something just struck me for, for the first time. I kind of 
looked around and all the people that would normally be serving food, preparing food, serving at tables, hosting tables, were older. Now, they were they people are older. like me. Not, are they? Or older, mm. yeah. Oh, really? I never noticed that. Oh. We notice it. And, and it got me thinking about other services that I use and obviously being a, a, a Tesco loyal. In my yeah. local Tesco, Joy is a woman. Oh, well, I've got a story to tell you after this. Go All right, well, yeah. well, there's a lady called Joy. Joy has worked for Tesco for 42 years. Wow. Her youngest child is the same age as my eldest daughter, Shannon, and she's not ready to retire. Mm. You know, she's a familiar face. It also got me then thinking about, well, in corporate life, we, as many of the HR professionals tuning in today will appreciate, we went through a whole generation of looking at policies and processes and procedures that were for younger workers. Yeah. So we looked at things like childcare, IVF, adoption policies, childcare vouchers, whatever it might have been. But we did all of that to support younger people in the workplace. I don't think I can remember one policy that I ever looked at that was for a more mature worker. And if they did have them, you didn't even know about it, like oh, you said. Absolutely not. And we shouldn't be we shouldn't be ashamed of that. We should celebrate it because it happened on our watch and we made some incredible changes that have helped people in society. But we have to now change our focus. It's got to be in the mindset of HR directors, CEOs, finance directors, in order to be able to bring in solutions to keep older people at work for longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think agree. the awareness of it though over the last year has just massively increased. I mean, your point on on not knowing or realizing yeah. that people in McDonald's are somewhat older sometimes. I mean, you don't really recognize it until someone tells you, and now, then you kind now, of go so out you and you see, it. and then you're like, oh god, actually, yeah, everyone is yeah. everyone is quite diverse in terms of age, and you don't just think it's a young worker in those organisations. So, I think once that awareness starts building, people start recognizing actually what changes need to be implemented, especially from an HR point of view, and definitely after COVID you'll see that there's such a difficulty in retention of workforce, there's difficulty in bringing in new kind of experienced talent. And you've got people in your organization that are actually fulfilling those roles already. Why can't we try and find ways to keep them in that organization Absolutely. too? So yeah. it becomes so important for, for businesses like Tesco's or Sainsbury's or any other retailers or any organization really to think about actually what skills do they have currently in their workforce and how can they retain it and even train it even further to grow those skills. Because at the end of the day, they're the people that know everything best and they're going to train the junior staff as well. So, yeah. yeah. And, and you know, for the first time ever in history, one in three people in the workforce are over 50. Yeah. Really? Now, that is, that is absolutely shocking. But one in three are over 50 for the wow. first time ever. Wow. Yeah. And one in four are acting as carers. And one in four acting as carers. Exactly. Across the entire UK workforce. So actually... It's such a huge demographic of people within that space that is, they're struggling essentially yeah. mm. or don't have services available to them. Yeah. One thing I wanted to mention, so that, that one, when we was thinking about this, you, you coming in today, it made me think of uh, somebody who works in the, my local Tesco. So there's a woman called Rose and she's been there over 40 years. That's true. And everyone calls her Auntie Rose. Even my <laughs> three-year-old daughter oh. goes, can we go Tesco? And then she runs in and says, where's Auntie Rose? Right. That's and sweet. everyone knows her everyone like she knows she remembers your name she knows she's like how's robin oh is in her birthday coming up chris she remembers everything and i'm telling you every time i go in that store i leave with a smile isn't that so like, nice though and because... when she's not there everyone goes where is like she's been off yeah. sick mm. recently i hope she's all right um and everyone even my daughters my daughter cried really because she's going Rose roses isn't in the shop because she always loves she, she would always come out from behind the counter and make and make, make time for everyone like <laughs> But I think, I think it's wonderful that somebody like Rose can be the face of Tesco. It's not the brand above the door, mm -hmm. it's Rose. And it, there's a, a woman that I know, my friend Debbie Pisani, her mother-in-law worked at Harrods one day a week, 95, and she only has just retired. Wow. <laughs> wow. Like, but how wonderful Incredible. that Harrods everyone, kept her there. Everyone, mm. everyone knew her everybody as well. Knew yeah. her. And, and, you know, the benefits, All she said that all the young people that work there love her. But we know the benefits of having an older worker or mm -hmm. a more mature worker. The opportunities and the benefits are fantastic. Yeah. So you get better retention. You know, you get a person that's happy to coach and mentor. You learn things from an older person. So that manners, that interaction, that way that they can just talk to a child, you know, lovingly. People absorb that, pick mm -hmm. that up. 
And if it's nice behaviours, they, they want to do that themselves. Mm -hmm. So the benefits are so great for having older workers in the in the workplace. Yeah, it's kind of the indirect benefits, isn't it? It's it's that person becomes a face of a brand. It's almost like you can't measure what um, Rose brings. Exactly, no. and actually they're no, part no, of the community I mean? at the end of the day. So it's not even just about the corporate in You're that just sense. The road, it's, literally. It's yeah, it's You're about the road, that. Like from Auntie there. Rose is is a part of the community that everyone knows. Mm -hmm. And actually in that situation, she's representing Tesco's. Yeah. One yeah. thing I would so say fantastic. that I do want to bring up is, is I remember one time it, it kind of broke my heart in a way where she she was speaking to me. She knows I work with in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. And she said, if you know anyone at Tesco, like can you speak to her? Because like, she doesn't feel valued. That really upset me. Like generally I was like, oh man, like, um, yeah. I've, I've, I've actually, like, she was like tearful when she said that. Oh, that's gonna make me upset. I'm gonna cry on the bloody podcast. Oh. <laughs> but like, uh, like I remember her saying, "I was like, you put 40 years of your life in here," yeah. and she said that to me one time, and I was just like, <clears throat> like she, she like, did she even get like a you know a message for her anniversary right, or anything Chris. like that? And mm. I was just like, give me Rose's details. I'm gonna do it. So I actually, I, I don't work there anymore, but I'm is, telling you, yeah, I will get uh, it into yeah. the hands. And the thing of the is, right she, person. I do have it. She wrote on a bit of piece of paper. She wrote on a receipt her details for me because mm. I was like, "What's your last name?" Because obviously I know her as Auntie Rose. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know her name. I have that at home. I haven't, and right, I, I feel guilty. That I haven't done anything about it because I was gonna. Um, I had this crazy idea. I never ended up doing it. It was I was gonna interview her. And uh, actually doing interviews. We should have had yeah, her here today. Cool. Like, you know, yeah, and doing, she's actually off sick of so I hope she's all right. Person. I was gonna interview her and post it on LinkedIn and tagging all the execs at Tesco. That was my idea. That was my plan to be like, oh. how is this person who is gone, goes up way above and beyond not like not feel valued? And I was like, oh mm. man, like if I'd worked in a company for 40 years and, and didn't even get, you know, a message to say a happy 40th anniversary yeah, yeah exactly right that must be you know anyway so i just wanted to bring it up oh, while we're on the topic send me, <laughs> so send me her details and i promise you i'll get it into i'm gonna do it for uk ceo and we'll get a message <laughs> from rose and make sure she's okay oh, that'll mean a lot honestly no, i'll do that i That'd promise you i'll do that so um what are the barriers then you know what are the barriers to getting the best from midlife workers there's a couple of things to be aware of you've got people that are living longer and that's a good thing Right, it's a great thing because we're living healthier lives. Um, so therefore we're available to work for, for a lot longer. At, you know, at the turn of the last century, 47 would have been our life expectancy. The fact that we are at the end of 47? this century. 47, mm. yeah, I wouldn't be here and you two would be classed as old. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm telling you this because at the end of this century, we'll be living to 100. Mm. So that's fantastic. But the other thing to bear in mind is that the workforce is also shrinking. So since the 70s, the amount of children that are being born has decreased. So less than two per year. And in fact, in October uh, 2021, the amount of children that were born has been the least since records began. So therefore, that is over time going to have an impact on our economy and on businesses. So the only way to make sure that we keep things going in the way that we want to is, is to improve productivity. In order to improve productivity, we've got to understand what gets in the way. And as I said, you know, older work workers, mature workers, it's, there's a taboo topic around them. And for me, we, we've, we've looked at this quite extensively over the last year or so, and I think there's three big barriers. The first is the biological changes that people go through. Now, We'll come on to it in a second, but mm -hmm. a lot has been said about menopause, but andropause is just as important. Andropause is the equivalent of the, of the female menopause. You know, it starts with a decline in testosterone. If a woman goes through 34 symptoms, any one of those 34, a man can go through 17 of those 34. And yet it's not spoken about. I've never heard anyone speak about that before. It's never yeah. spoken about, but it's an important one. So biological changes is the first one. The second barrier is just about career opportunities and career development. You know, I'm, I'm guilty. I know I've sat in talent conversations and, and spoke about people and said, you know, yeah. maybe they're too old, you know, are they a blocker? We need to get fresh talent coming through without really thinking, you know, what, what does this person bring? Why, why don't we promote people in their 50s? Why do we have a mental block when we see a person of a certain age? You know, in, in, you know, I, I was guilty of it. We all had that bias. They're past it. Yeah, mm. we have that bias. And of course, the third one, which Vivek talks really eloquently about, is working carers. 
And there are, you know, one in four people. We, we all know that looking after children, you know, we make provisions, we do all of the types of things that we do. But suddenly, when you want to talk about the fact that you're looking after an older parent or a relative or a person with disabilities, all of a sudden it becomes a bit taboo. Mm. And you try and cover it up. And we know that if you cover up anything in the workplace, you know, your, your gender, your sexuality, you know, the fact that you domestic violence, anything that you cover... 30% of your productivity is lost at the door. So if you're spending time at work having to try and research home care, research facilities that you can use for a loved one, you are wasting 30% of your time because you're covering. And if an organisation isn't open to that, then you're going to lie or leave. I think yeah. the interesting well, thing on the can work... Can I touch on that a second? Yeah, no, please. Uh, yeah. Shane, do you mind me sharing your story? So I just want to ask if everyone listen to my co-founders in the background. Mm. So my co-founder Shane, he he's his his granddad. They just had to get, get care, uh, and um, it's actually uh, I'm not going to go into all the details, but it actually has led to Shane's mum leaving her job mm. um, because they weren't understanding about the time. And after how many years, Shane? Twenty seven years wow. of service in that company, and they made it so <coughs> difficult to for her to. Uh, make the time to take care of her, her dad right yeah. and uh, that she left the business after that many years and um yeah like it was i, I just and, and the stress that i saw shane and his family yeah. go through and you know juggling in it between them you know one weekend shane is there next to his dad etc and it was so shocking to see the lack of support it's, from really the leaders. It's, it's sad and, yeah. and shane i'm really sorry to hear that you know, Vivek, that's exactly yeah. why we've been looking at what are the solutions to try and, and, and remove these barriers and create better opportunities for people to stay at work. And you've got, I mean, those stats that you've got around, say, say we took, well, talk, talk to Chris, say, say yeah. we take retail and professional services. What does that yeah. mean if you've got a couple of thousand people that, that I mean, work in your organization yeah the stats are the stats are crazy i think also just to touch on on shane it is a really difficult situation and i'm dealing with so many people who are actually going through something yeah. really similar um and it's crazy to think that at that stage of your career the the organization you work for is still unwilling to support you in whatever way possible yeah especially after everything we've just gone through for the last two years which is even harder but no in terms of the stats so you can kind of consider retail as being one end of the stick and professional service being something completely different. But for retail, so your example was at 2000, mm. if you think of an av average salary in those organizations, maybe being about 21K yeah. or so. With that, you've got about one in five employees that will be acting as a working carer. So maybe about 400 of those people are acting as working carers. You'll probably get on average about 300 people um, who will actually take a career break for some kind of reason whether that is a short-term career break, just to support in the couple of weeks that you need to support your family, and maybe that's unpaid, or actually on average, even people are taking significantly longer career breaks and not even going back to the same organization. So on, I think the, the stats that we've found with Orgshake is that 45% of people taking a career break um, won't even return to the same organization. Right. And the length of that career break will be about 380 days. That's over a year that they're actually taking out of work. Because you can imagine, just in, in Shane's example, or, or very common to everyone is, the minute you start getting involved in family care, the complications don't get easier over time. So exactly the same with my own granddad is we got involved in his care. We had to understand exactly everything. We had to take so much time out of our own lives to figure all that stuff out. And then three months later, something else happened. Maybe you got a liver issue yeah. or a kidney yeah. issue and then you have to go back to hospital and then he comes out with completely different complications. So you have to keep learning constantly all these different things. So it becomes really difficult. And that, even just on that career break, the amount that's costing an organization of the 2,000 employees is about 300K annually of recruitment, retention costs, training yeah. costs, everything else. And, and the knowledge so that goes difficult. out the door, right? Especially the, the knowledge, knowledge goes out the, the door. The knowledge, exactly. the network, everything, the experience. It's hidden. Yeah. There's one person putting in for a career break to say, well, I need to care for my loved one or wherever mm. it might be, or I need to leave. It's kind of accepted. And yet if a young person was saying... I need to leave because I need to go through an adoption cycle. Mm -hmm. We would be doing everything as HR to professionals help, yeah. to try and keep them in work. Well, you can consider it as kind of two waves that everyone, almost everyone, will go through in their working career. So you've got wave one, which is some kind of childcare needs. Yes. And yeah. that's maybe where they're a younger worker between the ages of, I don't know, 25 to 40. They're yeah. going to be going through some kind of childcare support need. Um, and 
businesses are really well set up for that. You're going to get childcare support. You might get even IVF treatment support. Yeah. There's so many businesses that are introducing that at the moment. Things around kind of maternity cover, paternity cover, all of that's already there in place. And then you've got wave two, which is going to happen between maybe the ages of 40 to 60 or even a bit older, where you're going to have some kind of elderly care support challenges. So exactly in, in Shane's situation, my situation, in so many people's situation, at that age is really when, okay, mum's becoming a bit unwell or granddad is becoming unwell or someone in the family has become unwell, maybe for the first time. And that second wave, actually, almost everyone is going to go through that yeah. at some point, more so than just the childcare, because you can yeah, say less people are having kids at the moment, but everyone's got elderly parents that are going to go through that. So it becomes so important. So that's your, your third point and the third challenge to your question is really actually the services that are available to people at that time in their lives and how businesses are supporting them with that. Because really at the moment, like you say, even when working at Tesco, there was very limited support at that age. And yeah. there was limited desire to even do your best to keep those people in the business. So I think that's where those things are now changing and, and businesses have to make that change. Yeah. What's currently in place? What's the current approach that companies take? You know, it's so limited. So honestly, if, if I'm going to be completely honest, there's, there's, there's almost nothing. There's nothing. There's yeah. nothing. Really? Yeah. You're going to get kind of your EAP support, which is going to give you some kind of counselling maybe or yeah. some signposting for elderly care services. You're going to have your private medical insurance. Again, they'll give you some signposting to kind of services like that. But there's nothing actually helping you directly through that journey to say, look, employee A, you need to look at XYZ services. Here's some a list of service providers. Here's what you need to do here. We can help you do that here. We'll support you on your contract, contractual negotiations, all of that kind of journey. There's nothing really doing that. And that's really what we're trying to implement. Seems crazy, doesn't it? Considering yeah. we're all going to go through it at some point. Everyone is. And it's probably yeah. one of the most challenging yeah. times in our lives. And the conversations I have with the employees actually is that they, their biggest burden is that they're so stressed by these challenges because they're dealing with mum or dad or grandparents who are so vulnerable. And they've got this huge stress in their mind. So your point on 30% lack of productivity for people covering, I think for these situations, it's even more. Could be. Because could be. they're actually, they themselves become depressed or anxious or stressed on, and they have their own mental health challenges. And that's why I think from a services point of view, the, the, the angle that things need to change is that there needs to be services in place that are actually dealing with the root causes of the challenges that are there. So... There's no point saying to employee, look, you're stressed, you're whatever. Here's just the counselor, go and talk to them. Because that counselor is not going to yeah. basically. They're not going to oh. support you on your sourcing of care providers for months. They're going to say, oh, think about doing this, this, this differently. And, and there you go, that's your support. Yeah. yeah. I, I think, you know, the, the, the role of the line manager becomes more important than ever. I mm. mean, we've talked a lot, you do a huge amount on the podcasts around, you know, the line manager, the role they play. For me, it's the most critical 100%. role in the organisation because if you've got a, if so I'm an older worker. If I had a younger person who was my boss or supervisor or whatever you call it in your organisation, and I was going through symptoms that were causing me, you know, pain through through menopause, if they're not comfortable in being able to talk about it. Then, then it's a, a subject that never gets spoken about. Yeah. Equally, if I'm a female and I've got a male person going through an andropause, well, one, they might not even know they're going through it because it's not spoken about. Mm. But if you've got 17 of those 34 symptoms, who's helping you? Mm. So unless HR professionals really understand those barriers to productivity for older people and start really getting into the root cause of, of what they are and how you can help, we're never ever going to improve productivity and we're not going to keep this really fastest growing demographic in work. Yeah. And and I think, you know, Vivex touched on it, the, the amount of or the lack of one education around it and two information that's available, even if I was trying to navigate for my parents and they're 83, but if I'm trying to navigate help for them, it's very, very difficult to get into the social space yeah. and look for help and care and support. So when you come across, and that's why I was so excited about meeting Vivek and his family, when you come across a product that you can lift and shift and say, this is actually a really brilliant HR solution that helps within the workplace, I want to see more and more of them. Yeah. You know, I get excited when I see tech solutions that help us in the personnel space. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. 
but but we need to see more of it and i think yours is you know yours is fantastic but we need to raise awareness of those types more. of things that are there mm -hmm. and yeah. we need hr professionals to stop having a blind spot because i know from talking recently to hr professionals about these barriers to to for mature workers each one of my friends that HR professionals have said, it's a bit of a blind spot. I'm not doing anything on it. But now is that what it is? Are we just turning a blind eye? Is that, do you think that's what's happening? I think it was. I think, I think it think is. It's a blind spot. I think like your point about going into McDonald's and not appreciating that, that yeah, the too. demographic yeah. is older. Yeah. You know, or Tesco. You know, you've got Rose, you've got Joy. Mm -hmm. Over 40 years of experience. Mm -hmm. They're older workers, but we've grown up with them. You can't always older. take, you probably take it for granted. Exactly. Until until they're gone, right? Or they they've left. Yeah. Then you're like, oh wow. Then, Listen, I've got older. Like, <laughs> and I, I still I still don't see myself as old, but I am. But, but so we've all got a blind spot when it comes. Yeah, to Yeah, I think the reason there's also also that blind spot there is because the employers just don't actually know what it's costing their business. So yes. to so to them, it's it yes, it's an issue and it's there and they're mm -hmm. kind of aware they can't of measure it. Measure it really. Yeah, they, they have no way to measure things. And half the conversations I have with new businesses that we're trying to bring our services into mm -hmm. their first thing is I have no idea what the challenge is I've got a story of one employee that's come to me and asked me for time off work to look after mum but I don't know more than that because either we don't have the resources to start tracking all of those metrics or we've just not had the inkling to do it anyway or the so, conversations because we can't blame our managers because then they've never been trained to have these type no. of conversations no, and they might not even be aware i mean that's exactly i've develop. been guilty of that by the way i've had i had someone on my team that was on i was like what 22 23 and she was 50 in, in her 50s and careful. i remember get, uh, careful chris <laughs> what? careful if i get in trouble oh no no, no, no. i just realized what you're saying that now no and i remember getting called into the hr uh, by the HR team, and I was like, "Oh no, what? I'm in trouble now." What? Mm. That's normally that you know, if HR calls you up, you know, we're in trouble, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. uh, that was the perspective back in the day. Probably a lot of people thinking now that's still the perspective. But I remember um, being told that that Karen was upset at the way that um, some of the language was using on the team, some of the things that were saying. It was it, she. She felt that it was you know, we was kind of um, um, not in being inclusive of her and and all loads of it. And I was like, obviously like, what? Yeah. But then I was when I was told like just the type of language we're using on the team and even some of the activities we'd use for like team incentives yeah. was like very sporty and active and let's go and do these crazy things. It was yeah. like, I'm not even thinking about her, right? And I, I no, I was completely oblivious yeah, it's so to all, the, all those things or her taking time off for health issues. Yeah. I was I, I wasn't I wasn't understanding of it. Yeah, and like, I, didn't, I didn't understand. I just but it I just didn't it, know. It was just that you were ignorant to it. It wasn't yeah. that you were actually consciously yeah. excluding mm. her. I think ageism is the last prejudice. You look at yeah. you look at things like credit. You know, you can't buy things if you're over a certain age. Really? If you, yeah. You, credit is, is looked at. Oh, because oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, you look at you look at travel insurance. Yeah. You know, since my parents were over eighty, so they, they can't drive abroad, no, and yet they can drive in the UK. Yeah. So there's so many things that are barriers to people of age. Yeah. Um that you know it is it is just it is just turning it on its head and saying, well, why is that? We need to understand, we need to appreciate and then remove those barriers. But it has to come from top down at the end of the day because they need to be implementing all the all the policies and guidance in place to actually support managers and line managers. Because yeah. even, even one of the companies we were working with, when we launched to them as a company, I had, after our kind of launch webinar and present, it wasn't a webinar, it was actually in person, a workshop that we had run. I had two employees come up to me after the um, the, the workshop and say, one of them was like, I'm dealing with family care issues for my dad and it's really, really difficult. Um, I'm having to take time out of work, but my manager's making me make all of that time back. And the oh, other was saying, is, I'm, you don't need that, str uh, no, that, you don't that, need that stress. And so the you, other, the other was saying, I'm doing the same thing for my mom. I'm taking loads of time out of work. And actually I don't have to make any of that time back. So within different departments in that oh, in organization, the in the same company. Oh. Yeah. So line That's... managers didn't have a kind of a cohesive strategy to, to support. So they they like, didn't know uh, what to I'm do. probably going to have to make them work. And that's back. where they, they've never been told by top level to say, look, if this is a problem, this is how you need to deal with it. This is our policy. If it's something that is maybe over 10 days of time, then you have to start making it back, but have a bit of that flexibility. We so. started to talk about um, costs. You know, you, like you said, mm. for 2,000 people in retail, it could be costing that organization somewhere between four and 500,000. In, in financial services, professional services, we know the amount of carers is closer to one in seven or one in eight. 
but you've still got a demographic of people that are looking after carers. That's going to be a cost of over five hundred thousand well, pounds plus. Yeah, because the salary is so much but, higher. Yeah, and we we've we've created a model now that 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 can actually help measure how many people you've got in your organisation, what sector you're in, and what's the likelihood of the numbers of people that you're going to have that are caught up with this caring uh, caring issue. When you start to understand the impact in your business, that's when the light bulb goes on and you say, actually, if that's the cost, I need to do something about it. But while it's hidden, like, you know, Janet might mm. be able to do hers and she gets cover from her line manager, but John doesn't yeah. get any cover. Exactly. Yeah. Whilst you've got those inconsistencies and it's not talked about, you've got no idea what the cost no. of the organisation is at all. Mm -hmm. You know, we had uh, one, of, one of my employees, he had gone to uh, the Mad World uh, um, yeah. conference a couple of weeks ago or a few weeks ago now. And um, they had these roundtable events and he was really excited because one of the roundtables was about working carers. And he was like, oh God, finally someone's talking about it. Yeah. Um, and he's super passionate about what we do, which is fantastic because he's had these experiences before and, and that's why he's joined us as a company. But he sat down at the, at the, um, the roundtable for working carers with the person who was chairing it. He was the only person that sat at that table. Not no a way. single person joined him on that table. Wow, that says something. And I wish he was that, I wish so he would have taken a photo and just like yeah, just, just like yeah. here, this is our, this and is us. This and is to him, it was absolutely outrageous because all the other tables were completely filled. Everything was filled with all the all, other common it? challenges that like everyone's doing, mental health, etc. All of that kind At of stuff. One of the biggest events yeah. in the space. Not a single person sat with him, and he was like, "I was just sat there for an hour talking to the chair instead because she was really interested by the topic." But even, even I think her was... You mean the chair of the table, not AJ? The chair of the table, yeah, <laughs> not, not AJ. The chair of the table. I was sat there to the chair for an hour. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. But, but that shows, it was, that it was really shows that it's taboo or, yeah. or it's seen as a but topic people even want to, taboo. They, 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 they don't even want to associate exactly. exactly. They don't want to be at the table. They're like, I don't want to get, be in a position where someone asks me a question and I'm like, I don't, I don't know what to do. No. Exactly. exactly. Probably, again, probably why we're not talking about it because people don't want to bring up something mm -hmm. and not have an answer. So we just, we basically, avoid it because we yeah. don't have a solution yeah for it what about yeah. the um is is the lack of development opportunities is that a challenge as well i think it is I, I i you know i come back to the point i made earlier about when you are talent spotting and you're doing your succession you just planning, don't even consider that group you yeah it's it, it's more likely that you oversee the people that are good at what they do they're great at how they do it round peg round hole let's not let's not upset the apple cart let's keep them keep them where they are when actually people can keep developing at every age i was just imagine rose was like um auntie rose was mm -hmm. like ahead of one of the tesco customer service teams like leading one of those and dealing with customers It'd be amazing I, exactly yeah. so, amazing and, and there is nothing to stop anyone developing at any age mm. i mean look, joe biden you know, the age he was when he took over one of the biggest jobs on the planet, Bill mm -hmm. Gates at 91. Mm -hmm. Oh, not Bill Gates at 91, but Warren Buffett at 91. Mm -hmm. is still seemed to be a leading brain in finance. Yeah. Bill Gates, 65, business guru. You know, the list goes on of mature people that bring something to it. I was talking to um, a, a psychologist uh, a few days ago. She's a leading author in her field. Uh, she's, she has done a huge amount in terms of occupational behaviours. She only qualified when she'd retired. <laughs> and yeah. she's a leading author right. in her field. Right, but she's full of energy, full of passion. Yeah. Full Absolutely. Of Have you seen that change, though, recently in terms of on the back of COVID, actually people wanting to try and keep their kind of aged workers more so have you noticed anything from your background? I, I think what we've what we've seen particularly in females which might it might tie into to working carers is post furlough mm -hmm. we saw half a million women not come back into the workplace yeah oh really yeah, yeah. that's a big one yeah yeah now i mean it's still to be understood as to why that might be um but it's considered that they were mature workers. Yeah. Now, whether they've gone to be carers or they've retired, I mean, I know four of my friends through the start of the pandemic to, to the end of, of the last lockdown uh, took, the, took the decision not to return to work. Yeah. Now, I know that those four people have still got a huge amount to be able to offer, but they've taken themselves out of the workplace. Mm. You know, and I, I, think it's, I think it's really sad because... You know, if if we look at the pension age, which is creeping up all the time, 
if you're 45 and you've started to be a carer, a voluntary carer, you've got a long way to go till you get a pension at 67, yeah. 68. Yeah. And actually, women do live longer than men and should be putting into a pension scheme for at least seven years longer or more than a man. I didn't know that. Well, you don't know mm. that until you're reaching retirement <laughs> age. And then you think, oh, I should have put a bit more in. Yeah. But yeah. all of these things are topics that if the HR community was to sit down and say, let's put a lens. Look, we've started to do it with diversity inclusion. Yeah. We've started to look at policies, processes and practices and say, if we put a diversity lens over this, do we need to change policies? Mm. We need to do exactly the same with mature workers and mm -hmm. say as a result of that, what's the spectrum, You know, what are all the opportunities and how can we enhance productivity by doing a bit more? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think yeah. businesses can, can tend to get caught in kind of the bubble of what the, the mainstream chatter yeah. is. So yeah. when people are talking diversity and inclusion, you're talking gender, you're talking sexuality, you're talking those kind of issues. Yeah. However, you're not talking age diversity. No one really associates it to that. And there's such a huge challenge there because actually, you are going to have a diverse and age diverse workforce as well. So it's exactly that point yeah. again. So all the all the DNI offices that are coming in, that should be top of mind as well as to what are they doing to support those challenges as well as all the other diversity challenges yeah. that are being. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. I was going to ask you the last question of what advice would you give HR leaders, but you both just pretty much covered it there. <laughs> yeah. Anything else you want to add to that in terms of, you know, this is the message now to HR leaders out there, what can they do to support? For me, have a look at your strategy. If it's not on there, really think hard about putting it on there. Think about the stats that we've said, the hidden costs of, of what you've got if you've got uh, a, m a mature workforce because if they are not given the support, they will either lie to you or leave you. That's true. Yeah, I, I would say the same in terms of strategy and also kind of being open-minded to, to think about those solutions and those yeah. challenges that are within your, your organization. And actually, in a way, take them as an opportunity because if you can find ways to support that, that diverse workforce that you have, you're going to open up a huge range of productivity within your organization. Your business output's going to massively improve. You're going to have people that are so well kind of experienced in what you do. So you're going to see kind of training and, and everything else and re recruitment, retention, every aspect of that organization yeah. improve over time because you have such a wealth of knowledge that sits within your business. So I think take it as an opportunity, think openly and, and just, just consider what solutions may be available for you. Yeah. Yeah. And those people, they'll remember, they'll remember that, that, you know, how companies supported them for mm. times or didn't. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, the ones that do support them, you'll have a low employee for a very yeah. long time, right? Yeah. Uh, as well um and with and unfortunately we've shared change journey people that have been in their careers for many many years were just forced to do it, whether they liked it or not yeah. because they had to then you're going to choose your family you know and what you shouldn't have to ever make that choice no there's a shane in every organization you know that there, there is someone like shane's mum in every organization needing support you know, unfortunately there's a person like rose in every organization mm. that's been around and perhaps a bit forgotten and I think anything that we can do to make make people feel that they're at the best they can be, surely that's the greatest gift yeah. any one of us can give. I agree. Um, um, before I let you go, where can people connect with you and learn more? Start with LinkedIn, yourself, definitely. Um, I'll unashamedly give, <laughs> give, <laughs> give the you LinkedIn my plug. number yeah. and exactly the same for Vivek. Yeah, you know? LinkedIn. Uh, you can check our website out, wearewema.com. That's where actually the cost calculator is hosted as well that we've worked with org shakers on. So if you want to find out what, the working carer challenges within your business, the cost of your company, the cost of career, um, but employees taking career breaks, you can take a look at that yeah, website. It's a, well. And it's a really, really simple tool to use. Yeah. So yeah, LinkedIn for our, for our emails, our contact details and org shakers and, and Wema. Yeah. Amazing. Fantastic. And as always, everyone listening, those links are already below. So go check them out now. But thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a real pleasure and important work that you're both doing. And I'm really excited. Um, I, I almost feel like when we first spoke, the fact that we've done over 400 episodes with CHROs all over the world, I and mean, this has never come up in a conversation. It's pretty sad. Yeah. I'm glad we're having this conversation now. For sure. And I'm really excited for the impact it's going to have. Yeah, thank, well, you. thank you. Thanks thank so much, Chris. Yeah. Thanks.